So for this video, I'll be working through question three of the 2017 level three mechanics exam. Right. Question three. Astronauts need to be able to measure their mass regularly so they can monitor their health. They can do this by being strapped to a light, wait, we'll just highlight this word here, lightweight seat that is attached to a spring shown in the diagram below. So there's my lightweight seat. We're just assuming it doesn't weigh anything. Um, and there's my little person there. When, oh, it's Sylvia again, is displaced from equilibrium, she oscillates in simple harmonic, harmonic motion with a period of eight seconds. You may assume her motion is linear. That's good, otherwise it's not SHM. Um, describe any changes in the size or direction of the restoring force as Sylvia moves away from equilibrium in the y, positive y direction, so she's going up. So we're talking about the force, so I don't have to add the force into my thing. So I'll write the answer, and then we'll discuss. Right, so I've said the slot, the size increases linearly um, as the force is proportional to displacement, and that's from Hooke's law. So f is proportional, or f is equal to minus kx. And if you look on your formula sheet, do they give it to you? Um, yeah, they do right here. So this is Hooke's law. Um, the force is equal to the negative spring constant times the displacement. Um, so I said the direction of the force is opposite the displacement, so in this case, negative. Right, that explains that. Right, next question. The amplitude of Sylvia's oscillation is 0 0.120 metres. The ref use the reference, a reference circle or other method to calculate the shortest time it takes for Sylvia to move up 0.8 metres from her equilibrium position. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. So let's just write what we've got. A is equal to... Uh, that's the amplitude, 0 0.120 metres. So she's starting off, she's starting off at zero? Yes, yeah, she's starting off at the equilibrium position, and she's moving up. So if we think of it, here she is here, and she's moving up. So she's starting off at zero, and she's going to be up, and then it'll go down, then up, then down, then up. So we're going to be using sine. So we're going to say, we're going to use the formula y is equal to a sine omega t but instead I'll just write in the general form so position wherever the heck she is in space is equal to the amplitude times sine theta where theta is equal to omega t right let's just write what we have so her new position is positive um, is equal to 0 0.08 meters and it's thankful that we that she's going to be we well, should start here and should be somewhere around here-ish. So that's our new, this is our y vector. I'll we'll just try and draw that underneath. So it's 0 0.08 meters. So in your phase diagram, sine goes, is that anti-clockwise? It is anti-clockwise. So if it went negative 0 0.08, um, you'd have to do it differently. But it's not, so let's just not worry about it. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to find... Let's just write this. So we've got, we've got y, we've got a. Um, let's just substitute that in. So we're going to have y is equal to a sine omega t. We want to find time. Um, the angular velocity we can figure out because we have the period. So from before, angular velocity is just 2 pi. It's equal to 2 pi f. Here's our 2 pi f. Um, and f is equal to 1 over t, because we've got the period, we'll just substitute, substitute it in. 
2 pi over t. So our angular velocity is, did I work it out? I did. 0 0.785 radians. Negative 1. All right, so all we need to do now is rearrange this trigonometric equation for time. So y, move the a underneath, divided by a um, is equal to sine omega t. We'll take the sine inverse of both sides. I'm going to say sine inverse of all this rubbish is equal to omega t. And then time itself is equal to, we can write that, time is equal to sine inverse, we'll put y divided by a divided by omega, because I had to move the angular velocity. I had to divide both sides by it, so I'm just dividing it by there. And if you plug and chug, you plug in your numbers that you have up here. Um, so you plug in y for 0 0.008, uh, 0 0.08, a for that, omega for that, it'll give you 0 0.929 seconds. And that's reasonable, because if it takes... Ooh. Eight seconds to get all the way around the loop. It's going to take four seconds to get from here to here. It's going to take two seconds to get from here to here, which means we're probably, we're at, what, 0 0.8. We're a bit over. I oh, know we're a bit under, actually. We should be somewhere in the middle. So somewhere between two and zero, which is close enough. Right. On the axis, can we read that? On the axis below, draw a graph showing Sylvia's velocity versus time when she is closest to the floor. Include the value for maximum velocity. So let's just, on our formula sheet, where is our formula sheet? Here it is. We have velocity is equal to A omega cos omega t. So let's just write that down. V equals A omega cos omega t, um, cos, we'll just put theta, because theta is equal to omega t, um, when it's max, when max equals 1. So when the largest cos theta can be, or cos omega t, um, can be is 1 when it's maximum. So in other words, v is straight up equal to a omega, which is, if you look on your formula sheet, Oh, look at that, v is equal to r omega. And a, the amplitude and the radius is pretty much, well, you can think of them sort of similar, um, except for one's SHM and one's just going around in circles. So that, the maximum velocity is 0. Where's it? 0. 0.12 times 7.85. And that gives me 0. 0.0942. So that's my maximum velocity. Um, so now we need to read the question carefully, starting when she is closest to the floor. So here's my picture over here. I'm going to pull her down, so she's down here somewhere. So when I let her go, she's going to be moving upwards. So she's going to have, if we think of everything going in the positive y direction, going that way is positive velocity. It lets us, well it is, it lets us know that we're going to have a positive velocity to begin with. And because we're starting um, at the top and the bottom, you have no velocity because that's when the chair turns around and goes the other direction. So we're going to be starting off at zero and we're going to be going positive. So now we know we're going to start off at zero, which means we're going to be using sine graph. And because we're starting off positively, um, we're going to be going up. So the period is eight seconds. Well, that's carefully done, isn't it? So here, there's our center of our sine graph which means our maximum is going to be between 4 and 0, which is going to be 2, so we need to go 0 0.0942, and here's 0 0.1, so it's going to be somewhere here-ish, and then same again because it's symmetrical, somewhere here-ish, and then I draw it backwards because I'm right-handed, so I can see what I'm doing. So a nice sine graph through there, up through here, to the origin. Here we have it. Right, so to start the oscillation, next question. Start the oscillation, Sam applies a vertical force um, of 4.4 newtons to Sylvia. This force causes Sylvia to move a distance of 0.12 meters. Calculate Sylvia's mass and describe any assumptions you've made to simplify your calculation. So there's, 
the first way I thought about how to do this was just to simply it's a it's a moving spring so you've got it's simple Hubble motion as well so the period's equal to 2 pi square root um, it's mass over yeah if you increase the mass you increase the time it takes to go up and down so it's mass divided by the spring constant um, that will help us find the mass because we've got the period it's 8 seconds 2 pi we know what that is we can figure out what k is because we've got the force and we've got the displacement so we got Hooke's law again equals negative k x yep in other words k is equal to minus f over x which is equal to what was the force 4.4 divided by 0 0.12 equals 36.66 newton meters because it's force over distance right now i just need to quickly rearrange um move the 2 pi underneath so i'm going to have t divided by 2 pi square both sides squared equals mass over k um, in other words mass is equal to k i've just times both sides by k times t over 2 pi squared equals so with t period is equal to 8 seconds this should come out as 59.4 kgs which is a reasonable weight for a human being the other way to do it is to use um, ep is equal to ek um, in other words half uh, kx squared is equal to half mv squared at the top of the ooh yeah you can at the top of the oh there's yeah at the top of the what's it called top of the swing you're gonna have no velocity and it'll be entirely kinetic energy and at the middle of this of the and the at the equilibrium point you're gonna have entirely kinetic energy and no potential energy and the bit and the energy is conserved so this energy goes to that that energy goes to that and back and forth and back and forth so you figure out what that is and then you work backwards to find out we well, you know you figure out what this is i should say and then you work backwards to find the mass there we go because you can figure out what the, the what this energy is and then we can work backwards to find the mass and then you still get the same thing so Cool. We need to fully answer the question. We found our mass here. Describe any assumptions you have made to simplify your calculation. So this isn't really the mass of Sylvia. This is the mass of Sylvia plus the chair plus the spring, yada, yada, yada. But up here it says it's a lightweight spring. So we're just assuming, um, we just, we'll just ignore the mat. We'll, we'll move this out of the way. Can we see that? Move that up and under. So um, ignoring the mass of the seat and spring I'll just put in spring um, one other little caveat assuming the spring obeys Hooke's law because it's always a good thing to put the spring obeys Hooke's law. Because let's be honest, not that many springs do.